Okay, wonderful. So Sherry, we're just recording now. Would you repeat just a little bit what you just said so for oh, prosperity? Yes. Uh, I just want to say what a beautiful job everybody did sending in their work and Michael for putting it together and finding such a perfect location for it, where the work could be actually seen and seen up close uh, in all its great detail and beauty. Um, yes, thank you. And there are more things to come with Silver Point. And Michael, you and I will talk about that. Somewhere out there, there's a book of the Silver Point exhibit that uh, Michael and I put together at the National Arts Club. And we can maybe talk about that. And I'm planning on doing um, a Silver Point workshop. So when the pandemic is over, <laughs> so everybody stay tuned for that. Michael, you are our hero tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Sherry. And I look forward to, you know, we're really wrapping up our publication calendar here at, at the, uh, the association. So I would love for us to talk about doing a future publication. Of course, another show. It should be an annual event. Oh, yes, definitely. Definitely an annual event. Okay, bye, everybody. I'm so sorry I have to go. Bye. So for those that are on, that was Sherry Cammy, who is in silver, and Sherry and I curated uh, a Silver Point exhibit at the National Arts Club. Now, Margaret, when was that? Was that 2015, 2016? Do you remember? Say, I would say, um, yeah, probably 2015. It was a beautiful exhibition as well. Um, both are just beautiful. It, you know, it was thrilling. And you mentioned the um, catalog. That could go somewhere. F absolutely. That was a lovely catalog. I have it, of course. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was an amazing show. And I think we did, we had at least two or three galleries at the National Arts Club devoted to that show. And it was um, Absolutely. The Trask, right? Was it the Trask Gallery? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it, was, was, it, was, it was large, beautiful. it was packed, it was, you know, kind of overwhelming that that many people would be so um, aware of Silver Point, or maybe just becoming aware because of that exhibition, but I mean, it was just so well attended, um, and so gorgeous, because Silver Point, you know, is something that's very curious and lovely, and um, people want to see things, you know, and I think now, too, it's like, oh, we just want to know everything because we feel a little bit, you know, uh, suppressed here. So it's a great time to have it again, you know. And the yeah. gallery is so beautiful, DFN. It's just this lovely space. So, yeah, it's thrilling. Good. <laughs> okay, so we're at um, 6.30 or so. So uh, we're going to start. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for making time and coming to this Zoom talk. Uh, my name is Michael Gormley, and I'm the executive director of the New York Artists' Equity Association. Uh, the New York Artists' Equity Association was founded in 1947, which is even before I was born. And it was founded by a group of prestigious artists who felt that um, they were best able to help emerging artists, and that artists should band together and empower themselves uh, and make sure that they were getting professional opportunities and taking care of each other. Uh, Equity has operated a gallery most of the time it has been uh, in operation. Most recently, we opened a space on the Lower East Side, 245 Broom Street. And we've been in this location for about seven years. Um, you can welcome to become a member of Artist Equity. If you're not, uh, please do. There's lovely opportunities all year long. There's call to entries, there's opportunities to curate. There are professional workshops, grant opportunities. We're a really active organization. And cheers, we just got our first national, uh, sorry, New York State Council of the Arts grant, which is a big deal. And that will help us expand our programming in uh, moving forward. So that's all very exciting. So um, what we're talking about tonight. So uh, tonight we're talking about a show that's curated with uh, myself and uh, Lisa Lebowski from DFN Projects. Uh, that show is currently up at uh, DFN Projects. You have about 24 minutes left to see it, um, but it's been a great show. And I'm gonna introduce Lisa, 
who's going to talk to you a little bit about what DFN Project's mission is and uh, a little bit about silver. So Lisa, you want to jump in there? Or oh, hi, thanks everyone for joining us. So um, uh, DFN Projects is a, uh, a project space in the Upper East Side. Um, and we, our mission is to help uh, with events, exhibitions and strategic planning in support of artists and dealers. So we are not a traditional gallery space. We will link up with other um, organizations or individuals to help them with their artistic visions. Uh, so Michael is a, is a little spoiler, is a dear friend. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> um, and uh, so we 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 had had a show here last year. Um, well, I guess a little. It was a year ago, but it was in twenty. Oh no, it was the beginning of twenty twenty one, wasn't it? it? Seems like two years ago. But <laughs> we had a show in twenty twenty one of uh, blue drawings. And, and we. Sorry, I'm just going to mute someone there. Okay, and we. Uh, uh, as we were talking about it, you know, the, the show looked very nice in this space, which I'll, I'll let you see a bit more of the space here. Um, maybe we should go ahead and play that video, or should we wait on that? I guess we can wait. Yeah, let's do that. So, um, so again, so Silver really came out of an iteration of a show that we did at DFN, a <laughs> um called Blue Drawings. That show then went to Birmingham, Alabama with Portrait Sync. So we, it was highly successful. And so uh, Lisa and I thought we'd come together and do silver, which is based on silver point drawing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna screen share, for those who didn't get a chance to see the show, and we have a little beautiful video of the show, and Lisa and I will jump in and give you the highlights or sing a couple of tunes as the <laughs> video is playing. So uh, let's see. Uh, you can make it clean by uh, there. We are. Yeah. Okay. Yes, this is just a walkthrough of the space here, um, and it's it's uh, you, you do have to come and see it in person if you can. We are because <laughs> the work is so delicate. That's the beauty of Silver Point, and why I was really excited to have the show in the space because it is a small space, an intimate space, and to have these soft, delicate pieces in here to, you know, they, they reflect light because they are made with silver. So to have that light reflect, as you can see, so <laughs> to have the light reflect off of them and have these little gems within the space um, was, was really special, especially for the holidays. You know, the holiday season was coming up winter and it is just, this, you have the silver skies and it, it, you know, the silver bells, like it just fits with the whole, the whole idea of the holidays and this time of year. In the show, just so you know, the show. I think what we, we most aimed to do was there's a, a wide variety of uh, work in the show, right? We didn't stick with any one stylistic choice. We tried to show a range of expressions, which Silver Point really lends itself to. Yes. This is Sherry Cammy's work here. If you haven't muted yourself, please mute yourself so that we're not over talking each other. Thanks so much. Who is this, Lisa? Uh, this is Jenny Walton. That's her piece. It's Phil Podway. He's one of our speakers tonight. Panelist. Great. Yes. This is uh, from the Art Students League, right? Yeah, from Rubenstein. Right. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Mm -hmm. So really accomplished here. An amazing show. Um, and again, the, the space was really perfect for it. Uh, this is one of our panels as well. Yes, it's Daryl Smith, this right? is the color pieces. Yeah, yeah. This is Joshua Henderson. This massive was a master, absolute master. Stephen Assail. From Philadelphia, right? Yeah, Leah, Leah White. From Incominati. Yeah. Um, yeah, Costa, right? Bakiakis, right? Our Students League. Our lovely Noah Buchanan, right? Who's here with us tonight. Thank you, Noah. Beautiful, beautiful. Dan Witz. Lori? Uh, no, Marla, right? Yeah. This is Lori. Yeah, that's me. 
Who's with us tonight? Lori Field. Who's right there? Hello, Lori. Clap for Lori. It's a beautiful word. That's the, snap your fingers there. This is uh, Smith, John, uh, was a professor of mine at Pratt. Amazing, the detail. Mm -hmm. What's the color of the walls again? I thought that was beautiful. There we go. Okay, so now I've got to get us out of this real fast. Okay. All right, so here's what we're going to do next. So how we're going to work tonight is we're going to have each one of the panelists just show some of their work that, and talk about it, like what interests about Civil Point, what draws into that, um, what they wish to express. Um, after we go through all the artists, which is Noah Buchanan, Laurie Field, Margaret Krug, who is actually my professor at Parsons, by the way, um, Phil Padway, Daryl Smith, and then Tanya uh, Ward. Right, those are our panelists. Well, then we'll do a, a bit of a panel discussion. Um, so here's what you do as an audience. We love participation. So what we want you to do is really pay attention and then put your questions in the chat. And then uh, Lisa will then read those questions out so we can keep the conversation going. So think about what you want the artist to talk to you about. So without any further uh, blabbing from me, uh, let's have Noah Buchanan come on. Noah, are you ready for us? Yeah, I can be ready. Hi, Michael. Hi, Noah. So Noah was my, one of my students at the New York Academy of Art. And Noah, as he was in the interview sort of admission process, would keep calling me, telling me what faculty I needed to rehire so that he would come to the school. And he sort of held that over my head. And I was I, like, I, there was numbers I had to reach. Noah said, well, I don't think I'm going to come. Maybe I'll come if you bring back Stephen Assail, or maybe I'll come back. Is that not true, Noah, right? <laughs> that is you, true. That's right. I would curse him out periodically because he made my life misery. But <laughs> we, did, we did run a great school. So without further ado, my love, Noah. Oh, thank you, Michael. I'm so honored to have been invited to the show and just to, to participate with everybody. Thank you, Lisa, um, and, for and to Sherry Cammy for this wonderful the concept. Um, and just getting to see that show just now with the overview, that was really exciting. Um, and get, getting to see everything so intimately, I, I drop, I, I live in California, so I'm in, I'm in, uh, Santa Cruz, California, and, um, I, hopefully I'm screen sharing now with you, um, let me know if you can see that image, uh, yep. and that's where I am today, I'm in my studio in Santa Cruz, California, this was the piece that I had in the show, and I had to drop it off before the exhibit started, and, um, I wasn't able to attend the opening, so, Getting to see the overview of the show just now was 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 great. It was very fulfilling. Um, and a minute ago, uh, Michael mentioned uh, Stephen Assail, who I studied with for two years at the New York Academy of Art, and who was also who, who is also in this exhibit. And um, I think a lot of my my practice and interest in Silver Point probably does extend from having worked with Stephen. And interestingly, something that Stephen um, trained me really closely in. Uh, was not silver point, but drawing with ballpoint pen. And I think that Stephen really uh, was drawn to these um, these methods that require, um, you know, a high, high level of skill in drawing. And I think he was really interested in the, in the accuracy required in, with something like ballpoint pen where you can't erase it. Well, that, you know, that applies directly to silver point as well. I mean, you know, it's, it's not, it's, it's every mark you put down with the drawing, it, on the drawing is going to be part of that work, and so it 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 cultivates not only a, a big sense of accuracy, but then also this sort of poetic um, concoction. The drawing is is sort of fermenting, where every mark you put down is now becoming part of the dance of the drawing, whether it's whether it's something you desired or not desired. So. Um, I also, I really appreciated something technical from Steven that carried over from, from ballpoint pen, um, which was that, you know, he, he would teach us to, to build up the, the ink and then rub it. And then by rubbing it, you could create tonal transitions and you could actually erase through it to create subtractive highlights. And years later, I thought, you know, I wondered if, if that would apply to my silver point drawings. And sure enough, it absolutely does. You know, rubbing the silver, creating a, a tonal rub with it on your, your primer and then subtracting through that if, if there's interest in doing that. Um, so, so anyway, that, I bring up the ballpoint pen drawing and Steven because I think there's a great 
um, crossover, not only in in his artistry, but his techniques and and its application to um, uh, to silver point drawing. Um, let me share some other images here and keep things moving along so I don't hog up too much time. Um, I really um, I, I fell in love with silver point drawing as a um, as a way of of making a, a study, you know, as, as a way of um, uh, studying and investigating a subject matter. So um, I fell in love with that from looking at Leonardo's drawings. Um, early on, I was given a book by uh, a Kenneth Clark book on Leonardo. Um, and it was just filled with all of his his silver point drawings. And at, at an early age, I saw those and thought, you know, here's this Renaissance master didn't have access to something forget very forgiving like a graphite pencil, but um, using uh, silver point as a way of exploring um, the subject matter. So so this is um, this is a silver point uh, study I've made for a, a figure painting. Um, I'd love to share um, the painting itself as well, just to just to show the the crossover um, in in uh, is the entire image displayed there, or are you only seeing partial image there? Okay, so um, this is an oil painting figure that comes from the previous study that I've just shown. Um, in most cases, when I make a silver point study, I'm going to just take that drawing um, and transfer it directly to the painting surface to then begin an oil painting. Uh, another similar work. Uh, to that, um, here's a study that I've made in, pardon me, while I need to grab that and pull that center screen if I can. Is that only a partial image showing right now? Or can you I see? I think it's good, looking good. That's great. No, yeah. Beautiful. So um, mixing here silver point and white chalk, um, getting experimental, which I, I see a lot of us doing, you know, where all of us are kind of being innovative with silver point in different ways. Um, I'm here, I'm doing um, toned uh, paper with uh, gouache. So silver point on gouache and, and coloring the gouache. Um, the white here is obviously not silver, but it's um, it's white chalk used to, to heighten the drawing. Um, I will then take something like this, um, you know, a careful intimate study and um, transfer it to, to a canvas, uh, enlarging it. This is just a, a vignette from a much larger painting, but you can see the same figures, those same characters um, showing up in the oil painting at life size. So, you know, I'll take a small drawing like this. I find silver point to be so intimate, so intricate that uh, enlarging it to a much larger scale works very well to, to create then a life size um, oil painting. So um, yeah, it, uh, if there's anything else uh, I can get into, um, I don't want to take up too much of my time before we move on to, to the other artists involved. Um, let's just, Lisa, you want to just ask one question for, to Noah? Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm actually curious. So, um, cause your work is so like, your paintings are so vibrant and, and have so much, so much color and, and, and just, a, a lot going on. So it, it does make sense, I guess, that you are working with such a pared down material, but uh, is there something specific? Well, I guess two, it's a two part question. So do you work with silver point uh, often for your studies or do you use other materials? And then uh, why in particular silver point for, for generating, the, for working out the ideas as they will be later? Well, yeah, I do work often with silver point. I, I, I love all drawing mediums. So I'm, I'm always kind of circulating between graphite, um, a charcoal. Um, I love mixing uh, graphite and white chalk together uh, on a toned piece of paper. Um, of course, a lot of artists, I'm sure, will note the similarity between um, graphite and silver point, at least at first. You know, when you, I think when you first put the initial marks down on a silver point drawing, it's very reminiscent of a graphite drawing. But one of the things that I think I, if I had to pin it down to what I love the most about silver point is that is that I noticed this, um, it feels like an organic evolution in the drawing where the, the, you know, the color, of course, the color of the silver point starts to change. It starts to evolve, um, taking on, um, you know, more earth tone hues as it ages. But I feel like that's a really magical part of the process for me. I'll, 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 I'll make a silver point drawing. And then a day or two later, I feel like the drawing has evolved on its own. I feel like it changes. You know, it, it, it's it's like something chemical is happening in the material itself. 
Um, I like I like Silver Point as an investigative medium, as a study, not only because of um, you know one of my heroes, Leonardo da Vinci, having used it so much for for his investigations and studies for paintings, um, but but also because um, it is so. I think for me, um, using it, especially in a ha hatching manner, um, and you can see in the drawing I'm sharing now where it's heavily hatched. Um, this this hatching and the and the character of Silver Point lending itself to hatching uh, is is so much like a a sculptor crawling across the form, making a form pass, a very intimate form pass with with one's fingertips in a way over the surface of the form. So so I I really feel like when I'm finished with the Silver Point drawing, I have an intimate understanding of the form itself, and that I'm prepared to move forward. To any future work that might come from the study, whether it's an oil painting or um, or another drawing. Great, no, that's wonderful. Uh, we're going to move on, but thank you so much. And thank for you. those that are in New York, Noah just won a very important commission to do the library doors at the Salmon Gundy Club. So if anybody's in New York, they should go and take a look at that. Those doors are absolutely exquisite. Thanks, Thank you Mike. so much, Noah. Uh, there was also one question about the curatorial process with silver. As with most um, curatorial projects, it's very organic. One person recommends another person that you look at that work that leads to another work. So it all just kind of builds as one would make a painting or a drawing when one is putting a show together. That said, um, you know, by all means, become a member of artist equity because we do calls for entries all the time and that's the best way for the curators to get to know you and your work because you know we you are then in our community and then we're sure to reach out to you and make sure you get into our exhibitions okay so the next one up is uh you know i'm gonna have margaret krug jump in because i need to kind of work a little bit to figure out how to do laurie's uh images so margaret could you uh go ahead and jump in for us Okay. Um, hi, Margaret. Hi. Uh, can you see the entire image or is there a, I have a bar kind of interrupting it. Um, uh, we have a good portion of it. I, I see it all on mine. Good, because um, I can't really move it down. Oops. Um, so uh, this is the image in the exhibition. Um, and uh, I really found uh, Noah's uh, conversation really interesting. I'm really interested in how things evolve out of each other. Uh, I love doing silver point and it's very meditative and quiet for me and, and looking at things. Uh, specifically, um, I like looking at botanical things and well, almost anything really. This is a piece um, on uh, paper that's been, uh, uh, it has a uh, ground of um, zinc uh, handmade watercolor with a little dot of pigment to um, give it a toned ground. And um, I have a lot of silver point uh, uh, instruments. Um, I inherited uh, some that are very fine very, very fine lines. And I've become very, very attached to that. I want my silver points to look kind of loose. Um, some of my work is tighter, but I want my work to come out of the evolution of using Tasha's. I do a lot of Tasha's, which probably all of you know what a Tosh is, but it's, uh, uh, for me, a light dusting. It can be a heavy dusting. For me, it's a light dusting of um, graphite or charcoal um, on a piece of paper and then you draw into it and then you um, uh, take back, uh, uh, erase back, um, extract material and draw back in and extract and it's a nice rhythm. So I do a lot of these. For this piece in particular, I had a Tosh that I had done in a park, which I love just 
doing things outside. Um, and I particularly love this piece. It's a painting, I've done an egg tempera painting, this particular image and um, other drawings of this image um, and doing it in silver point. I wanted it to look as soft as a Tosh. So I used the very fine silver point and it has uh, just really intricate, tiny, tiny lines and cross hatching lines. And I you can't do exactly what you do with silver point, but I with um, graphite or charcoal, but I wanted to have that same very loose, delicate sort of feeling with this. I also love that, uh, and I, you know, sometimes think it works better than others when it changes. It depends on what climate you're in, I think. Having it change to brown, having this kind of alchemical um, thing happen where it turns into this delightful, soft brownish color. I think it has something to do with the zinc white um, interacting with the silver and that can uh, facilitate this brownness. Um, or brown color. So Michael wanted me to mention Spinocchia, which is a place where I teach um, once or twice a year uh, painting and then drawing. And um, Spinocchia is a beautiful um, estate in uh, Italy, in Tuscany, just a little bit south of Siena. And I do silver points there and I create my papers there a lot because I have tons of, I have a ton of pigment here too, but I just have the kind of facility to do that while I'm teaching. I can code a lot of papers. I coded this paper there this summer um, or this fall. And um, so uh, that lends itself. I think there's a lot of sulfur in the air. There are a lot of um, uh, mineral springs in that area. And I think the sulfur also facilitates the tarnishing of the silver, which I just, you know, I'm so um, fond of that happening. And I think it has to do with these, you know, climate and how silver kind of lives in and changes with um, the temperature, the climate. It, it kind of, you know, simultaneously lives along with us. And I love materials that do that. I like iron gall ink that changes in color. So um, yeah, that's something, uh, you know, that I, just love about silver and love about working um, in Spinoki on this wonderful estate. Um, and uh, this sort of connection with nature and living things. I like working from what I'm looking at. And I also like working from my own drawings, which this is working from my own drawings um, and just being in that present moment and being in a very meditative state with it. Um, I just want to jump in because I, I should have, told the audience. Uh, so, so Margaret teaches at Parsons School of Design and also has produced a lovely book on materials and techniques um, and is very engaged with um, how one works with processes and used to teach a great class at Parsons called uh, Small Panels, where Margaret would take you through all these various techniques that she studied all the way from silver point to Venetian glazing, to egg temper really as a history class to sort of introduce you to techniques as they evolve through history. So, and Margaret was also the, uh, the director of education at the Whitney uh, prior to Parsons. So, so really is very engaged um, and committed to uh, the expression of materiality in the arts, which I find really engaging uh, as we sit here at a digital screen, um, but very sort of counterintuitive to the time we had. So Mark, I meant to sort of introduce you before you started, but I just want the audience to really understand the background that you come with, with your love of materials. Yeah, thank you, Michael. Yeah, it's it's really, um, I love the explore, exploration of materials, which sort of, it's a conversation and then you're informed as you're using them about what to do, um, how to have a convert. Everything changes when I'm working. I don't really plan exactly what's gonna happen. And then I like those isn't that conversation, but bringing back to the painting on panel, which is what I teach in Italy, when I painting class I teach. And then I teach silver point when I'm teaching the drawing class. But the painting class, uh, I use silver point on the panel to um, solidify our image, imagery before we then go into an egg tempera painting. It, it, we can start with silver point 
it's, it works very well on a gesso panel as well. So um, that's part of it. I want to introduce everyone, every student I have really to Silver Point, no matter what class it is, just so they're familiar with just, you know, the kind of wonder of it uh, and, and the simplicity of it. You know, you just have to have a piece of silver and a piece of paper that's been, uh, that has a ground and it's just, you know, it, you can cover all your sketchbook pages with it. So thank you, Michael, yeah. Well, let's see if I, so this is a piece that um, was part of the exhibition. Okay, you need to mute yourself there. Thank you, Lenny, mute yourself. Thanks Thank you. Thank you. So it's um, so it's uh, a piece that's in the exhibition only. It's online, and this is um, called Moonflower. Uh, and this also is a drawing done at a place called Banyo Vignone, which is a, a mineral spring bath um, mm -hmm. in um, uh, Tuscany. And there's a beautiful moonflower patch there, and this is something I did there. And um, it this flower is in lots of uh, <laughs> some are uh, some are very uh, yeah they're and some are just uh, you know very representational like this. But moonflower is something I'm very attached to. I'm very attached to Willa Cather and a specific book called Song of the Lark, where um, moonflowers are spoken about um, in depth. Um, and it's a sort of symbol uh, of, 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 uh, of um, my attachment to literature too, and to um, making pieces. Um, this piece goes, actually, it's been sold, and I'm thrilled that it's sold in the, from this exhibition. Um, but it is a, it accompanies um, a portrait that I've done of uh, Willa Cather. I do portraits of um, figures, many are literary or music figures that have been ex just, you know, hugely influential um, on my own thinking in my own art. I'm very attached to literary and um, just different figures that really initiate my work and um, how I think about art and being an artist. So Willa Cather, this is her companion. This is a companion to the portrait. That series is called Faces and Flora. And I am fond of, as I said, botanical, uh, botanical explorations. Um, so, uh, and then this piece is called um, uh, um, uh, Purple Hyacinth for Hendrix. Um, and this is one that's, I really love this piece. It's just done out my window, which a lot of them are uh, looking at the hyacinth um, in the you know window gardens that we have here in New York City um, and just sitting at the window and drawing in this meditative state, uh, these delicate hyacinth uh, uh, flowers. And uh, it's beautifully tarnished, which I'm very happy about when that happens. Um, and I, as I said, I do these to accompany uh, figures, uh, flowers and uh, faces. And um, now I feel free to sort of, maybe because Noah did this, uh, show you just, you know, where this comes from. This is a portrait of Jimi Hendrix, who I said is a huge influencer on me. And this is graphite. Um, and uh, this is something I explore in my work all the time is these, are these. Uh, portraits and then pairing them with flowers um, and specifically just people that have been huge influencers on me. He in particular was so um, iconoclastic as a very young child. I really love uh, how he saw the vast possibilities of the creative um, endeavor and was so very skilled, but he wasn't held back by that, uh, any kind of academia. He was just experimental and had this incredible drive to create. And that really, he just, you know, brought me into this other realm of thinking as a young person, um, just watching him, his sound, his style as a, his personal style. So I wanted to honor him. And I'm thrilled that this is a part of the exhibition too. Um, and um, yeah, yeah, so I can, talk on, but maybe I'll let it go to other people so they can uh, have a chance. <laughs> Great. 
Great, Margaret, thank you so much. And I, I said earlier, but Margaret was a very important teacher of mine uh, while I studied at Parsons School of Design. And I think if you have the opportunity and you can make it over to Italy, to Spinocchio Castle, you get to study in a feudal castle on the top of the hill, 20 minutes outside Siena, an hour outside Florence, and you get all that. And Margaret too, by all means, reach out to Margaret or me and we'll send you a link Stop. to yeah. that. Uh, to that class or the, that session. Bye, Margaret. Thanks so much. Lovely chatting with you. No, it's such a and pleasure. I, hey, wait. I wanted to thank you, Michael, and I also wanted to thank uh, Lisa because you know it was just a lovely opportunity to be able to show my work at the gallery and to be a part of all this and part of the conversation. It's it's quite a thrill. Thank you both so much. Thank you, Margaret. Okay, so you know, Lisa, your uh, Phil is actually your. Uh, the artist that you brought in, would you like to, you know, sort of sing his praises for us and warm him up so the he can jump on in there and uh, and woo us, right? So yeah. uh, over to Lisa. <laughs> hey everyone. Uh, yeah, so um, Phil is a recent graduate from the New York Academy of Art, which was also yes. my um, alma mater. So I'm, uh, you know, particular to that family and, and many of the other artists uh, in the show and here tonight. Um, and uh, yeah, Phil just, he's been doing some wild things with Silverpoint. I'm not sure if he's gonna share or talk about that as well, but he's been like picking up anything. I've been seeing a lot of technical questions and he's been picking up anything that is silver, you know, like silverware and even drawing with that because why not? <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, I could use my rings. <laughs> I used to be a jeweler. So uh, yeah, Phil has a lot of really interesting uh, ideas about uh, working with material, but also conceptually. So uh, I'll hand it over to you, Phil, to, to, so that you may talk about your work. Thank you, Lisa, great intro. Uh, let me just unmute. I think I'm unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes, Phil, absolutely, go for it. Great, um, so uh, yeah, thank you, Lisa, A, for having me and including me in this. I so appreciate it, and also for the great introduction. And thank you, Michael. Um, um, it, it, I was just bowled over to participate in this. I think that the level of draftsmanship at this show, is, it's so rare to see draftsmanship front and center, but to see it just, you know, taken to a level like this, everywhere you look in the room, um, it, it was such a treat. It was just a sumptuous treat to, to look at and to be included was just beyond, beyond. So thank you guys. Um, so yeah. Um, this is my piece from the show, the one that I have up now. Um, I um, am actually going to kind of pivot on what I was going to say because Noah Buchanan uh, said so much of it. Uh, thank you uh, but for such a, a great talk. Also, um, I have to say, uh, I, so I did study with Stephen Assail um, for the two years at the Academy, but I started Silverpoint in Thomas um, Germano's class and his history and theory of composition. And he just spoke so highly of you, Noah, this past semester. I was his teaching assistant. And um, I, yeah, so it's a real honor to have been in a show with you as well. And it made Thomas's day, <laughs> just so you know. Um, so yeah, I, I also kind of, um, I didn't know it when I was younger, but it was Leonardo that turned me on to Silverpoint. And my wife and I actually spent 2014 and 16 living in London. And this was before I got to the Academy. There was a Silver Point show at the British Museum um, and it was called Silver and Gold. And in the show was this um, Leonardo that we probably all know, especially like if we you know, were, were young boys attracted to drawing at an early age, this thing was just fierce. And uh, it, it, you know, it just stays with you like so few drawings can. So this to me was like this epic, um, Part of childhood that really has followed me my whole life and when I saw this on the wall at the Silverpoint show I was kind of like what is this what is Silverpoint as someone who just loves to draw um, uh, I was immediately attracted to it so I, I did make it eventually to the New York Academy of Art um, and one of the you know first things I did was explore um, self-portraiture I was uh, in the process of doing a self-portrait series and just kind of exploring what are the mark making potentials with um, you know, a sliver of silver. Um, and uh, you know, I would continued on for the, I, this was my wife, unfortunately um, COVID hit in my second semester and we all got sent home. And this was like the height of the pandemic. 
Um, and I just was, I kept exploring Silverpoint. What can I do with Silverpoint? And this was my wife uh, literally puzzling, what, what the hell do we do next? Uh, what do we do you know, next week? What do we do next year? Um, and then using it, obviously we were doing these Zoom kind of model sessions um, because school was shut down and I would use Silverpoint to draw models over Zoom. Um, but uh, the, so there's two point, points of art generally and Silverpoint specifically to me is kind of, it's both open and closed form. And it's also both, um, I find it intellectual, but also really fun. This is what Lisa was saying. And I'm gonna to get to this right now. So the intellectual part is I find the metaphorical use of silver um, it's, it's an, um, it's like alchemy. It's literally turning garbage to gold, garbage to silver, using art, using the power of focus to take something totally meaningless garbage and turning it into a piece of art. Um, and that is like alchemy. And that is like literally making garbage into a precious metal. Um, and I found that particularly attractive to me because I was at the Academy exploring, um, kind of my own adoption. I was adopted at birth. And right before I started at school, literally two months before I began my MFA two years ago, um, I discovered I had a biological father and a sister, and I was conceived the day she was born. So I'm the product of um, an extramarital affair between a married father with two daughters and a nurse who he met at the hospital the day his daughter was born, who had been a nun for 17 years up until like four months before that day. So um, not to overshare, but long story short, I love this idea that, you know, one person's trash is another person's treasure. I can tell you my adopted family is extremely happy that I was born. So um, yeah, that's kind of the metaphorical um, kind of just the ability to pack and then unpack something like that I found super attractive. And then to Lisa's point, um, I don't know if I can I'm just going to stop screen sharing for a second so that I can start screen sharing again. Phil, you're on mute. Okay, this is just a one minute video. I'm just gonna show you process really quick. It's using a silver earring and a bottle opener um, <laughs> to, to do a portrait. And now it, this from a mark making, I mean, it looks a little hokey, but it's not an like a it's not a social media play. It's literally just exploring what kind of marks can I make with an earring? What kind of marks can I make with a bottle opener? There's a flea market on the Upper West Side that sells this stuff for four dollars an item. It's silver plated, but it makes a mark, and I just find it fascinating um, from a draftsmanship point of view. So this is, yeah, just using that's an earring and that's a bottle opener, <laughs> and the idea that you can make fine art with junk. Um, I Again, I, the intellectual facet of this, I find fascinating. So um, I can actually move the mouse. Sorry, that was covering it. And you can just kind of, you know, you scratch away and it's as if you're using a pen or a pencil. And yeah, so that's me in Silverpoint in a nutshell. I've been earnestly playing with it for about three or four years now. And I am just absolutely in love with this. Um, and I think it's just um, I think that the possibilities are endless because anything you can imagine can you can pretty much find coated in silver and you can draw with it and make these totally different marks with it. So anyway, uh, with the end of this video, I guess I'll end my segment. And guys, I just want to say thanks again so much for having me. Um, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. That was you wonderful. Again? Yeah, yeah. That was, you know, I, I what I love most about the Silver Show is um, how contemporary uh, the approaches have been, how exciting and experimental and into the process of them. And one wouldn't think with Silver Point that that's where the show would head, but that's where it wound up. So, and thanks so much for that. Um, so we're going to jump now to Daryl Smith. And Daryl is also uh, one of Lisa's darlings. So I'm gonna let Lisa sing uh, 
give him a bit of a warming up intro for the audience. So take it away, Lisa. Oh, thank you. This is actually a real pleasure because Daryl Baba Tunde Smith is one of my favorite people amongst everyone here. You're all my favorites, of course. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I met him while he was a student at the Academy, he actually came to my studio. So if you want to be my favorite, just come to my studio. Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, he's a he's a trilingual, quadring, quadlingual artist. He speaks many, many different languages, but not just verbally, visually. <laughs> he really pulls from many different uh, uh, variety of worldly aspects of art history and, and makes very contemporary art with it. He's a true classical artist, like he's a classical artist in the truest sense of the word. So he's, I think I mentioned another graduate of the New York Academy of Art. And uh, I'll let Daryl actually, you know, continue because I just could cavell all day. <laughs> My God, well, thank you. <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. Um, I, uh, I'm gonna start off before sharing just to kind of talk about um, how I got interested in Silver Point. Um, I studied at the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts for my undergrad, and I was a painting major, but I realized that my favorite part of painting was doing all the drawing before the painting. And um, I was always the student that like didn't have enough paint on their palette and was like, use more paint. And I'm like, no, I don't want to. Um, and uh, it was delicate in that sense, but I still loved materials. Um, so though I wasn't using enough paint, I would make my paint from scratch. Um, and, and so I fell in love with the materiality of um, just making things from scratch. And I had a teacher, Jill Rupinski uh, in cast drawing um, and yeah, she, so she told me, I had two teachers tell me separately about Silver Point. Um, Joe Rupinski said, Silver Point is like the gourmet of line drawing and I love food. So of course I was like, yes, let me do it. Um, and then I had another teacher who no one knows, uh, Renee. Renee uh, Falx is a, a, a teacher I studied heavily under and um, at, at PAFA and she, also introduced me to silver point drawing and I, I didn't really know what it was. And so I picked up a book, uh, the book of art by Cinino Cinini. And he describes this process of fixing a drawing onto a canvas with a silver stylus. And I was like, there's no way this is gonna work. You know, I'm reading this thing from like the 1500s and it totally worked. And I immediately became hooked with that. And I started to look at a lot of not, not Leonardo da Vinci, interestingly enough, but Raphael. I love Raphael drawings, love Raphael drawings. His drawings are so delicate and like sensitive. And I really, for me, that was like the pinnacle of drawing. I was like, yes, I, I get it. Um, and another guy whose drawing I fell in love with, and I'll share my screen, is Jan van Eyck. Um, and this drawing is at the Morgan Library right now. And I like, it's so beautiful. So this is a metal point drawing. Um, it's gold and silver at the same time in a drawing. And uh, I think everyone at the Morgan Library hated me for like, being two centimeters away from this for like an hour, but it just, it's so beautiful, this drawing. And I love the way the lines are. And so I copied uh, this type of mark making and the mark making of Raphael. And then I just kind of jumped in um, with it. Uh, it's, it's like, I think Margaret was saying, it's really meditative for me. I, I I fell in love with the way the material um, glides across the panel or the paper, um, the slope build up, the, the fact that you can't erase um, all those things. Um, this is the drawing 
from the show. Um, the work that I do is based a lot on um, ancient Greek art. I'm obsessed uh, with it. Uh, and I use ancient Greek imagery and kind of put myself into those uh, visual situations and compositions. So this is um, a piece called Mangling or Two Pentheus. And um, at this time I was drawing, I was studying at the Academy for drawing and anatomy and I took a cadaver class. So we were drawing from the lab for, uh, for the medical lab for anatomy. And of course I um, brought this piece into the lab and drew the, the guts. I'll kind of zoom in here to see all the lines. This was my first piece where I mixed metal point with egg tempera. Um, I swore I wasn't gonna use color, but then the idea was like, no, you should use color. And I was like, okay, but like, how, how do I use the color? Um, and egg tempera came about and I just fell in love with the, the kind of similarity of mark making with, with linear language. Um, and this is the piece that it's based off of. Um, this is a scene from the tragedy, The Bacchae by Euripides, my favorite uh, tragedy. Um, I could go on and on about that, but I won't. Um, but you often see this uh, theme represented in like Renaissance art, but not with the same sort of gruesomeness that you see in the literature. And so when I saw this piece, I was like, oh, hell yeah. Like I'm here for it. And so um, I put myself into that scene. Um, another piece is this. Um, this is a, another kind of fascination of mine with Cycladic sculptures. Um, in 2018, I had the opportunity to go on a month long residency in Athens, Greece, uh, to do drawings based off of the uh, Cycladic collection of art at the Cycladic Museum of Art. And I really kind of love this um, play or this, well, not really play, but there's like a sort of um, like violin slash like, like, female like idol figure that I really kind of fell in love with. And this little, this little sculpture for me held so much beauty and like power. And I wanted to kind of make one of my own. And so this is it. Um, I, I really love just like quiet. I think that's one of the things that I really, really enjoy about Silver Point is that um, you can, it, it's a very quiet medium. It's delicate, of course, but I would say that many other drawing materials also can be delicate, but not quiet. Um, I, I like that uh, working in metal point, you can have both. Um, and something can be quiet, but also strong. Um, and, and so I like to kind of play with those two kind of dichotomies in a piece. Um, this is another piece. This is a couple with a mask. Uh, this is Roman, it's a Roman mural. And what I really love about Roman art um, is the range of facial expressions. They kind of look pissed off, like you're interrupting them. Uh, <laughs> you know, and I was like, oh, I have to definitely do a piece like this. You know, the guy is like staring, he's like giving us a death stare. Um, and I really love masks as a symbol in art. Um, it's both a sort of, you you know, people, if you think about like ancient Greek theater, you, you, you put on the mask to become a different person um, but you could put multiple different masks on to then change your personality, all these things. So there's a whole um, obsession that I have with that. And so I, of course, made a, a drawing about that and got to experiment with 
the lapis, the lapis lazuli, egg tempera. Um, it was so fun uh, doing this piece. Uh, and I don't know how I draw. It's a combination of lots of different types of hatching and cross contour lines woven over top of one another. Uh, and I love the I love the fact that I can't erase. It like stresses everyone out, but like I fall in love with it. I also love hair. Drawing hair is really um, awkwardly satisfying. Um, and then uh, I'll end with this. Uh, just last year, I did a kind of like a two week. I don't, I guess you could call it a residency, something like that, um, at the Institute of Classical Architecture and Art in New York. I kind of used their cast hall as a, as my studio, because I wanted to really study this piece here, Crouching Aphrodite, or Crouching Venus, or Venus de Vienne, has many names. Uh, and then there's another sculpture of, um, it was Ariadne. Um, but this sculpture, I just like, infatuated with uh, the, the, the curves, the type of like slight distortion or like contortioning aspect of it, the, 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 the plaster marble looking like flesh. And um, so I spent about basically the entire two weeks kind of researching this through line and then kind of made my own drawing based off of that experience. Um, uh, I work similarly to the first piece. I, I love working in a combination of metals, uh, gold and silver. Gold is really light. Um, and what Phil was saying of like open and closed form, I'll do more open form, even though it doesn't really look like open form, uh, drawing with the gold and then build up the layers and then kind of add silver in the the darkest areas um and it was it was so fun uh and i think with this piece i kind of found a love for drawing backs but i can zoom in uh, you can see the kind of weaving of lines um like this oh, it's just so fun anyway I'm, I couldn't like scream about drawing, but uh, yeah, there's a delicate softness um, that I, I kind of really am attracted to with drawing and metal point. Um, so yeah, that's me. That's Thank me. you, Daryl. That was just a big treat. And for those who don't know, the ICA uh, is on 44th Street. And it's uh, it where it's where actually uh, Jay Collins used to house his Grand Central Atelier, and it was founded to sort of infuse classicism into contemporary practice. They have an amazing class collection that includes architectural fragments and important statuary. So good, yes, it's so good. Um, and I actually had worked there for a while as their vice president of education, so I was real love that place and um, they're doing great work there and they do continue education classes and you can get access to their cast collection so by all means look them up online they're a great organization all right so um tamia ward is next up mm -hmm. uh and tamia are you ready to sort of uh jump in there and lisa will also tell a little bit about how um she came about meeting you and sort of getting you curated into silver yeah so um, so, it, you know, I was singing Daryl's praises and one of the reasons is I, I know him as the silver plate master among, among many, but I, I did reach out to Daryl and say, who are some other people I need to know? And he did mention to me, but I was also very, and I was thrilled because I was already, already very familiar with Tamiya's um, uh, research and, and presentation in both historical art and also contemporary art. So I was already very familiar with her, but now then I got a chance to actually work with her work. And, uh, and you know, something that Daryl had mentioned was about the, how Silver Point can be both, um, you, you know, quiet and energetic, like it can have these dualities and you can for sure see that in Tamiya's work. So Tamiya is uh, also a, a graduate of 
academia or fine art. And um, are you still a student there or do you graduated, right? Or graduated last year. Yeah, congratulations, Nessa. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and uh, and and uh, you know, she's also looking at art historical influences in her work for sure. And then just yeah, ge general things that we we are interested in in art as looking through aspects of history. So I'll let you take it away. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, everybody. Thank you for having me. Okay, so I was introduced to Silver Point through Daryl. Um, I think it was my third year, and he was at PAFA trying to scan his Silver Point work. And we, at that point, we had already worked, we were working together, we were co workers at the PMA. And um, he was like, Oh, I'm going to be at PAFA. So I was like, Okay, well, I'll go to the, the library too. So we're sitting there and he has his Silver Point materials with him. And he was like, well, you wanna try it? You know, you'd actually really like it because I actually worked in ink. So similar to what um, Noah said, I am I primarily at that time worked in pen and ink, like quill pen and all that stuff. That was my work. And um, I have, here it is. Um, so this is what I worked in primarily. And, like what many people said was the ability to, well, the inability to erase. Um, that's an adrenaline rush for me. I love it. It makes my lines more confident. I have to make decisions more quickly. Um, and so working in ink like very intricately was like my thing. And so when he was able to bring that silver point, I was like, okay, well, I can't erase it. Let's do it. Um, and that's how I was introduced to it. I haven't been working in it for that long, but I fell in love with it immediately. Um, but yeah, that's my ink work. And, um, but yeah, back to this piece. Uh, what I really enjoyed about it was, um, I just find it um, amusing that I work uh, way more intimately and like more tightly in ink than I do in silver point when based on the feeling of it and the, the feeling that it gives across like the light and airiness of it, it seems like you know I'd work more closed form but honestly I kind of move around a lot and I think um, that's another thing that I enjoy about it is everything is seen um, whether you like it or not but what I do make see and I kind of like have to work with it even if you make a mistake you have to keep going um but yeah this is the piece that I have in the show um I was I'm constantly thinking about sort of tension and ringing with the form and the figure I'm constantly thinking of tension and how far you can push the body how similar you know, parts of the anatomy are with others. Um, that was sort of my exploration in these figurative abstractions. Um, if it's going to let me, let me change to the next image. Probably not. Or maybe we're maybe just going to a little bit. <laughs> Let's see. All right. Um, yeah, here we go. Here's another piece. Um, this one was fun. I like this one a lot. Um, uh, the closed form of this one was just really fun to work within. Um, I, I kind of, I well, with these ones, um, for future ones, I'm planning on them and making studies for them. Um, but this one was a lot of making random lines and then working within them and like beating the crap out of the silver point. <laughs> um, uh, that's, that's like my favorite thing of being able to just loosen up with this medium in comparison to my ink, you know, I'm really, cause um, a lot of the time when I'm working in ink, in ink I'm working in front of a model. Um, and so I'm just going in straight with the ink and just trying to make sure everything is perfect. Um, and with this one, I'm constantly adding like, okay, this is a leg, maybe it's a torso. No, never mind. It's a back. Like it can just, it's so malleable. Um, and I, I just enjoy the energy of this medium, even though it is a very quiet medium. So I'm kind of like messing around with that a lot. Um, do I have one more? I might have one more. Let's see. 
Ugh, my tablet's so weird. Anyway, we're gonna look at this one then. How about that? All right, so <laughs> yeah. Um, another thing about this one is, um, like I said, the ringing, if you think of like a towel, just I'm constantly just feeling the medium as much as I can and trying to get that across in my pieces. Um, because like I said, because it's such a light medium, it's like, you know, how can you, how can you like, without ruining the integrity of it, how can you get across something very harsh and powerful? Um, and that's something I've been sort of tackling a lot with this one, but yeah, that's me. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much to Mia. That's really beautiful. They're extra and, and the contemporary of it, the, the sort of it's a really fresh approach. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to mess this whole thing up and do the best I can to screen share. Uh, and let's see my desktop share. And we're going to go to Lori Field. And I'm going to start if wishes were horses. Laura, are you ready to go? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I, don't, I, can't, I can't share the screen, but. Uh, yeah, so I yeah, have a chair and people should be able to see it. Can people see oh. that? Is that good? So I, I believe that Lori, um, so I believe that Lisa found you at spring break and maybe Lisa can talk a little bit about that. And she was, um, She's really so excited coming out of spring break or I'm making this whole thing up, but it's a good yeah. story anyway. Um, and coming in, calling me immediately and saying, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> You'll never believe what I found at spring break. And, uh, and I'm so excited because now I'm really a curator. So that was uh, Lisa's story. So Lori, talk to us a bit about your work and uh, all about Silver Point. Well, I, you know, I, first of all, I want to thank Lisa for inviting me to the show and for finding me at spring break, which is like the most unlikely place to find a silver point artist. That's what we thought. <laughs> it blew my mind. And I, and I was just casually going around with a friend of mine. Um, Jason. Jason. Yeah, Jason Vogel. And, and we paused in the room. He's like, oh, this is Lori's work. And I'm like, this is silver point. And it was this whole room of silver point. And I was like, I got, I got to work with her. <laughs> I got a show, I got a show for her. <laughs> well, I actually had collages and, and tapestries and, you know, cause I'm kind of multimedia crazy. So, but I did have an entire wall full of silver points. So that must have been what you were drawn to. So, oh, I'm, yeah. so I'm so grateful that you saw it and that Jason brought you there. So great. Yeah. Um, I have absolutely no training at all. I went to art school at Purchase about 40 something years ago. I won't say more than 40 something years ago, but um, I then left school without graduating and I became an illustrator for many years um, in New York. And then in about 25 years ago, I got back into doing fine art again and I started off doing encaustic work. That was what brought me into the whole fine art world again. Um, and then from encaustic, which is also a kind of archaic medium, I, and I, uh, I, 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 I somehow it led me into finding out about Silver Point, which I had seen before many times in museums and wherever, but I am primarily a drafts person, so I just um, wanted to draw in a new medium. I, again, I'm struck by how many of you have said you love the idea of not being able to erase because that is my, I'm so excited that I can't erase. Um, and it, it does force you to be, um, I almost go into a trance. You know, I sort of, uh, it's very meditative, as Margaret said, I believe, and not being able to erase is really the thing that's the most wonderful about it to me. But, you know, it forces me to just slow down my mind and just develop a hand-eye coordination, almost get in touch with the spiritual side of myself, you know, and um, I, I obviously love botanicals. I also like the idea that 
silver point is an ancient medium, but I'm putting like a totally contemporary spin on it with my subject matter. Um, I'm a symbolist, I guess some people would, would say I'm a surrealist, but I really consider myself to be a symbolist. Um, and almost all of my work in many mediums is starts out drawing based, including my encaustic work. So it's, it's just been um, a delight to discover this meaning, a medium. I've been using it since 1999. And I have had, I'm gonna close this door here. My phone, which never rings, decided to ring now. Um, so I, I had a show in New York in 2012, which was called Wild Horses and Wildflower and Wallflowers. And it, uh, it was at a Claire Oliver Gallery in Chelsea at the time. But, and I did 111 silver point drawings. They were all up on one big wall. Uh, but the show closed after four days because of Hurricane Sandy. And I couldn't, oh. you know, I couldn't find out for about a week whether or not anything had been destroyed. So I haven't really shown the work in New York in, in this medium until this show. So I was so happy to be able to show it again, um, except that I did show it at Spring Break. But, um, you know, it's, it's just really, I, I love the idea that it's such a small community of artists that are working with this. I mean, it's growing, but it's, it's, it's kind of a nice community of people and our work is all very different from each other, but it's just a, it's just a really nice um, mix of people who just worship the art of drawing, you know? Um, and, you know, I have, I, I think, uh, I think I have on my Instagram page, it says I draw, therefore I am. So that is basically, you know, I just, I just love this medium and, uh, you know, it's, um, I haven't worked with, oh, oh, this, I want to talk about this one. Uh, this one is called Cold War. And I've done maybe a handful of silver points on black ground. Um, it's actually my favorite way to draw with silver point on black ground, because when you draw with it, if you come to the side, the shimmering, the shimmeriness of the lines is really apparent on black ground, more so than with, with a pale ground. Um, and also, it's another thing that forces my brain to work in a certain way because you have to do everything in reverse. So all the all the light parts, you know, all the all the dark parts are where you put the silver point, and all the, so it literally hurts my brain to do it. So I try to leave myself a lot of time when I'm gonna be working on a, on a silver point on black ground. Um, this particular one was actually in uh, Jason's old gallery uh, in, in, Ch in Ch Chinatown, not Chinatown, um, Lower East Side. And there was a bar in the back of that gallery. I don't know if you remember, Lisa, if you were ever there, but we had, I, I pleaded with Jason to let me put it up without a frame because I love silver point not seen through glass. And that's how I show it. So he let me do it. And then this woman came out from the bar and spilled a sticky pink drink all over it. And Jason had practically had a heart attack. He was so upset, but I fixed it you know, because it was done on acrylic and um, acrylic gesso and it was able to be fixed, but don't ever, you know, show up. The, the, the moral of the story is don't show your work in a gallery that has a bar in the back. So, <laughs> so but anyway, I, I don't know. I usually do these talks where people ask me questions. So if anybody has a question, I'm, otherwise. Oh, I can't hear anybody. Well, I'll, I'll, I'm sorry. I mean, people can start typing in questions if they want, but um, it's just funny because I used to, uh, prior to Lodge, I, I used to uh, run a gallery in the East Village, so a little bit north, uh, that we were in the back of a bar. Oh, okay. <laughs> the opposite. <laughs> right, right. 
Um, we never had that happen. That would have been absolutely, hard. that is horrifying. But yeah, there's something about, I guess people- It worked know. out. It's, it's a good story. <laughs> yeah, I want to jump in. My first uh, art gallery was in the Lower East Side on 10th Street. And this was in the 80s and it was called Limbo Lounge because it was somewhere oh. between life and death. And we actually did after our parties and that's how we were able to sort of keep a gallery going. Right, right. Uh, because we realized we could charge whatever we wanted after four o'clock in the morning. So um, I'm gonna just jump in with a couple of questions for the panel because we have a couple of minutes uh, to Lori's uh, request. So I want to ask, um, does, does the materiality inform the content? Is, or is it sort of the other way? Like what, or are you working together in once? Because there's such a wide variety of content here. So I'm gonna let anybody jump into that. How about um, Daryl, would you wanna to talk to that about how material informs actually what you're making? That That is a good question. Um, I, at first I thought it was um, because, you know, silver tarnishes to a brown color. Uh, there's this organic quality that happens with it. Um, and I thought it was kind of related to that. However, for me, the material um, and the work is kind of more based around the idea of if I like Renaissance art I'm, or Renaissance and, and classical art, and but classical meaning the period after the archaic period and ancient Greek art history art and then Renaissance art. So if I like that stuff, I should just use the materials that they used, um, you know, and, and so I do. Uh, though I, I work the, the with silver point, it depends on, I guess, the surface too. Um, Cause I, I love working on panel and, and Laurie, I have the same exact same feeling as you about kind of exhibiting and showing work. I like love like having this panel, like pristine, like block of slab of like a wood, you know, and it's like glassy and just like fine lines all over it. Like I love that and nothing else. And so um, I'm really minimal in that way. Um, my, my artwork is also minimal. Um, but in the material aspect, I think mm, silver point, yes, but the, mm, the ground preparation even more so because uh, I make uh, my grounds from scratch. Um, thank you, Chinini. Um, so that, that's kind of where, where I, I like to, to see it um, in terms of material and, and content. Thank you, Daryl. So that was, leads into a nice question that came from our audience. And maybe Margaret can jump on this. Can you talk a little bit about grounds? Like how to prepare special grounds, what special grounds goes into uh, making silver point? It's gonna get everybody jazzed up. I can hear the clapping in the background. There are a lot of grounds, um, but uh, you know what I prefer is just making my own watercolor medium and then putting in, I, as I said before, I prefer zinc white and I like to tint the grounds, um, just various subtle tints. I also like working on a black ground. I, you know, the black ground is an amazing experience for me. I, you know, there's so much to say, but I do prefer, you know, I'm not, a, don't love acrylic grounds. I don't think it takes the material in the same way, but you know, it's still beautiful. Um, and you can use gesso. I, again, I do that on my panels because I do a lot of painting also on panels and I do the drawing and I'm very much, I draw constantly every day and I do the drawing on the panels many times with silver points. So that is just traditional gesso made with rabbit skin glue um, and um, uh, chalk. So that is a ground, um, you know, wash, you can buy gouache, make it simple, just use gouache in a tube. Uh, it's, you can buy the grounds now, but it's so simple to, if you don't want to make your own watercolor medium, you can buy a bottle of it and mix it. It's so simple to do and it's, it's so gorgeous. The gorgeous thing about drawing on gesso is that, again, you can polish it with, um, you can uh, 
use a burnishing tool and it becomes like shell-like surface. So all these different surfaces do kind of dictate what happens. Um, but silver point just goes on any, you know, any, any ground, it just needs a ground. It needs something to hook into in order for, for it to become a, a mark and for the silver to powder off slightly, it becomes, um, it, it, abrade, it sort of abrades it to become a line or a mark. So I don't know, maybe there are more, many more that I'm not talking about. There There's casein as well, casein paint. Oh, that's casein. Been, that's been my favorite one, actually. Is it? Um, yeah, casein is gorgeous. I forgot to mention it. Yeah. I love casein. And then the silver point ground or like the gesso, traditional gesso, I'll do instead of chalk, I'll do a uh, bone ash and then like white titanium white and zinc pigment um or you could use marble dust instead of bone ash but marble dust is kind of hard to like sand um you don't need a lot of it but um those are the two that i've worked with um or three i guess because the casein but i love casein you just buy a bottle of it you could buy a big bottle of it um and you only need a little bit and thin it with water, one, two coats, boom, done. That's so simple. Yeah. It's pretty nice. Gorgeous and simple. Yeah. So um, just for your information, uh, Margaret's book is in the chat where you can, it's, it's like a gorgeous illustrated cookbook. If you're looking for tips mm -hmm. on how to, um, you know, really work making your own materials like Margaret and Daryl have been alluding to. Uh, on that uh, note, can you all recommend other sort of good resources that the audience might be able to sort of think about or look up that sort of talk to, you know, the, the drawing techniques that we, be, besides uh, the most famous one, why don't you talk about that one? Well, Chanini does begin, began to inform me immediately. That's yeah. a big part of the foundation of my whole entire book. I mean, um, but um, yeah, uh, Durner and but I mean, there's recent exhibitions that have happened in the world that are just extraordinary. In Paris, there was one about 10 years ago, and there are two extraordinary books that everyone could look at. I can grab them off my shelf um, and somebody else can talk and I can just hold them up you know, if you want. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah. To yeah. the Morgan as well. Van what? Eyck to um, Van Eyck to Mondrian at the Morgan Library. There's a couple of silver points in there. Um, there's a Verrocchio one in there. Um, Whoa, Verrocchio, really? Yeah. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> I, it <laughs> me, right? It caught me by surprise, like screamed in the middle of the room. Um, but uh, yeah, that's a great... Um, an absolutely great uh, exhibition. Oh yeah, there is a Facebook group too. I think I'm in it. And besides, um, besides Margaret's uh, workshop coming up in Spinocchia, are there classes that people know about on the panel that they can recommend that people might be able to, artists that are looking for some, like Daryl, are you gonna do a workshop soon, maybe here at the gallery or at DFN on a little, Silver point demonstration. Ooh, there you go. Actually, so funny enough, so another person in the show, um, Leah uh, White, is at Studio in Kaminati, and I'm currently the artist in residence there right now. I'm in it uh, right now in the Philadelphia, and I uh, I did a silver point workshop last year. I'll probably do it again um, this year. And it can be in two different spaces. I can do it one in Philadelphia. I can do one at the DFN, Lisa, looking at you, because we can definitely plan that. I love going over all those really fun materials, like a mad scientist sort of situation. <laughs> so hey, Mark, could you put your link to Spinocchia in the chat? Because people are asking if you could load that up. That would be great. Okay, let me just show that. This is like from these ex ex exhibitions in Paris. Um, they're just filled with silver points. And, you know, 
these are very, most of them are very early, but then there's this book too, La Papier Alors. Um, this book is filled with silver points. It's huge that are ancient to contemporary, which I love contemporary silver point too. Mini recto verso, which I find is really much part of what I do with my silver points is draw on both sides. Um, and nobody sees the other side ever, but it's a real treat to think there's a secret in there. Um, and that's what I find really engaging about recto verso drawings is you have kind of a secret on the other side. Um, so those two books, the Papier de l'eau, and there's a book I can't reach, but it's from the National Gallery in Washington. It's too far up and it's huge and it's all on silver point. It's got everything in it. <laughs> yeah, I want to I wanna mention that book because uh, it, it is, does, it is by one of our artists in this show. I think we're talking about the same one and it is in the chat. Um, but uh, it, you know, for people who are watching this later, I don't think you'll have access to the chat possibly. So uh, so I just wanna mention the silver metal paint book by Susan Schwab and Tom Azulo, who's in this exhibition. Uh, the, uh, uh, so I think that that might've been the book that was really to the National Gallery of Art. I could be- Oh wait, no, I found, I found there's Leonardo to Jasper Johns. That's the book. Oh, but, okay, there we go. So I, yeah. I may have been talking about two things. But then the Tom one, Tom was like, love you, Tom, love your work. Um, that book is also amazing because that one shows it's full of contemporary silver point art. Um, I highly recommend. So Michael, did you say to just print the, Link. Yeah, you can just put the link to your uh, Spinocchio workshop into the chat because people are asking. Um, they're biting at the bit to get to Italy to study. Um, what, why not? Well, I think we're about out of time there, my friends, but I think let's, I think you should give a big, loud round of applause or clap or show or wave your hands for this amazing panel tonight and how much we've given you with our love and our uh, again, I, I can't recommend enough that you go down and see the show if you can. Uh, become a member of Artist Equity. We're a really lovely, great, exciting on the way up art organization, and we want you to be with us. And look forward to, um, we do lots of events, lots of cold entries, lots of Zoom chats, and the only way you're going to hear about that is to um, get on our mailing list. So um, Gina is going to load uh, our email into the chat. I hope she's still with us. Uh, and you can email that. It's info at nyartistsequity.org. And we'll put you on our mailing list and we'll let you know all that's happening soon here and at DFN. So uh, that's all I've got. I love you all. Give Lisa again a big round of applause for uh, being the bestest hostess Ooh. on the Upper East Side. Uh, we even got Brooks here. Give Brooks a real round of applause. Great artist equity member. All right, my darlings, thanks so much. I'm going to wave you all by. Uh, we have a show opening here next Thursday night. The members annual is the biggest hit of the century. Come by next Thursday night, six to eight, Equity Gallery, 245 Broom Street. Love you all. The show And this show is up till Friday. So you have till Friday, so yeah. tomorrow or Friday between 11 and four to come by and see the show before it closes. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, everyone. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for coming.